Fresh Art International presents Fresh Talk, conversations about creativity in the 21st century. I'm Kathy Bird, Fresh Art producer, and today I'm on the telephone with Charles Geis, based in California and New York. He's owner director of Charles Geis Contemporary recognized for developing new talent, as well as advancing more established artists. He features modern and contemporary art, film, video, and new media by nationally and internationally recognized artists. He's been pivotal in the careers of leading contemporary artists, including Hank Willis Thomas and Carrie Mae Weems. Currently, he represents some exceptional talent, and that includes Chicago-based Jefferson Pender, who's featured in another Fresh Talk episode. Charles has placed works in many prominent public collections throughout the U.S. and abroad, including the Brooklyn Museum of Art, the J. Paul Getty Museum, the International Center of Photography, and the Williams College Museum of Art. Charles has curated in a number of exhibitions as well throughout the U.S., and he's managing director and co-curator for Photo Miami. That's impressive, Charles. Thank you. I want to know how you got started. Tell me. I was born with my passion for art. Um, I was I was born and raised in, in Chicago in Hyde Park, and my family went to museums at least once or twice a week, and and my dad really loved art. My parents collected, but my dad created art. He he sketched, he did watercolors, he he painted, he. He sculpted. He actually sculpted a, a bust of me once, and he was also a photographer. Like any kid, I wanted to be like him, and um, I drew. I played musical instruments. Uh, my dad played guitar, and and of course I took photographs. And my my art teachers suggested that I go to art school, but my other passion was psychology, so I eventually ended up earning my undergraduate degree in that and went on to get a master's in business. And I ended up working in the healthcare industry. It wasn't, as you can imagine, really a passion, but my positions afforded me the income to do things that I liked, such as travel. And both my wife at the time and I loved art, so we began collecting. It was mainly photography, but we also collected some sculpture, paintings, and works on paper, too. Pretty much all contemporary. I decided to leave the healthcare industry in 2001, and I, I knew I wanted to do something I was passionate about this time. Now, by this point, our collection had grown a bit, and, and I realized I was seen in collecting very little work, at least photography, by black artists. You know, I, I, of course, I saw Carrie's work very early on. I think it was 1992 or 93, and I knew of, of Roy's work, Roy de Caraba and, and James van der Zee. But comparatively speaking, it was it seemed like it was just a fraction of the work that I saw featured in Miss Anne shows or art galleries, which was pretty much by white men. And everything seemed to coalesce, and 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 that's when I decided I would become an art dealer, and that I make my name by specializing in work by black artists. What is the most important role that you play through Charles Guy's Contemporary? Uh, you know, it's, it's actually kind of funny. It's, I, I think my role is pretty much the same as it was when I worked in, in healthcare. I create opportunities, I strategize, I facilitate, say, between artist and collector or artist and curator, and, and I manage. I, I work with artists to try and help them structure their careers, and, and I really enjoy that. That's a privilege for very few artists to have someone that helps them track their career and to get the most out of every opportunity. And based on the selections of artists that you've chosen to represent and work with, it seems that you're very interested in art that is research-based or based on a conceptual process grounded in contemporary culture, but connecting with political, social, and cultural history. I haven't really thought about it that way, but, but it's true. If, if you had asked me what type of work I liked, I would have said contemporary narrative, you know, photography and, and conceptual work. 
But I think it's pointless for people, you know, for artists, to try and separate themselves from the world they live in. It's, it's going to impact their work in one way or another. So I definitely tend to favor work by artists who are conscious, artists who engage their society, their cultural history, and, and social issues head on. But even more so, I like work that engages the viewer. I love it when it's subtle, when, you're, when you've been engaged by this really wonderful portrait or a landscape, and then you look and you realize there are all these cultural or social issues at play. Arisa Portolese, for example, she uses portraiture to address the representation of women in identity politics. Erika Dietes, Priya Kambli, Birta, Piontek, each of them, they're, they're all producing work that, that address deep interpersonal or social issues. And, and you're right, I, I, really, I really gravitate to that. Let's talk about a couple of the artists that have work to be shown coming up this summer at the Festival de la Luz in Buenos Aires. The one that I was looking at first was Max de Esteban, mm -hmm. a photographer who's based in Barcelona. And I noted that his references were in literature and philosophy. It's true. Max has he's developed a wonderful body of work. It, it works on multiple levels. He's addressing many of these same issues, the ones that I mentioned before, self-identity, body politics, but from a highly philosophical perspective. It's really great work. The overarching project is called Elegies of Manumission, but it's made up of three individual projects called Vertige, Private Utopias, and On the Uncertainty of Being. And then he addresses the role of photography itself, of portraiture, arguing that it's of little import if it's not socially relevant or if it offers no aesthetic challenge. And Max, Max is really smart, and, and it's, you know, it leaves no doubt as to why he was a Fulbright fellow. Definitely. His photographs are very painterly. There's another artist that uh, is going to be shown in that same exhibition this summer from Colombia, Erika Dietes. And right. I noted her, her photographs are communicating this very poignant personal loss that's brought about by collective tragedies, which I found very fascinating. Tell me about her latest series. I think it's called Sudario. Right, right. Yes, Erica's work is really special. She investigates issues of memory and loss with a, a level of maturity in her work that, that I don't often see, particularly from, from someone her age. She's She's 34, and and if I can step back to the the series before in, in called Rio Rio Bajo or Drifting Away, she presents a, a series of, of photographs of, of objects submerged in water and then printed life size, and so those images are they're really quite wonderful. And then you find out that they were owned by the disappeared victims of the massacres in Colombia, and. And you also learn that the bodies of the disappeared are thrown into the country's rivers. So water is, some, is symbolic of life, but it also represents death. And, and Sidario, her, her current series, is, is almost a continuation of that same word. It's an incredible meditation on the horrors of war. She interviewed and photographed 20 women who had been forced to witness the massacre of those closest to them. And then she printed those images on silk panels that are that actually measure over seven feet in length. She intentionally she wanted to represent or to reference Trava Turin, but she also references Takriki, the traditional burial sheets used in Judaism. And she hangs the panels at varying lengths so the viewer you you walk through and between and underneath them and at the same time, you're, you're hearing a soft, almost inaudible recording of a woman sighing. It's, it's really incredible work. So, so both Max and Erica's work will be on exhibit uh, in Buenos Aires um, beginning August 1st. You're about to launch a blog, Art Participant. That's <laughs> very exciting. What are your plans for this web platform? You know, I, I really I, I wanted a platform to talk about my artists, but, 
but also about other artists and, and arts in general. My my role, my my position affords me the opportunity to see some truly wonderful work, and I also like to write. So art participant allows me to talk about some of what I've seen and and to and to share that, um, and, and I'm really excited about it as well. What I hope to create is what I like about art. I like the fact that it's represented in books that you can go to exhibitions that you can see shows, you can you know, you can attend the annales, so on and so forth. And I thought it would be great to have a place where you could you could go and you could see and read about all of that. Now you know, obviously there are a number of blogs about art, but again it's not that I think my perspective is unique, but I just want to share what I've had the, the opportunity to see. And the best way I thought that I could do that was by creating a blog. You're very actively a participant, so I think that's a great title for your blog because you seem to be really watching what everyone else is doing. Everyone wants to be heard, but not everyone is listening. I've always been told that I'm, I'm a very good listener, and you know, in many ways I think that's why I want to become a psychotherapist because I like people and I like to listen to them. And so hopefully that comes through in, in the Twitterverse or, or through the blog that I let people know that, that I'm listening to them and that they're being heard and also that I can serve as, as a liaison, you know, some, as a bridge between, say, an artist or you know, the art world in, in, in general. Been listening to Fresh Talk with Charles Geis. Read more about Charles and hear other podcasts in this series on freshartinternational.com.